This update brings new features and includes numerous bug fixes. Let's start by reviewing the new features in this update. The first feature I'd like to highlight is the addition of new settings for the optical trackers, the threshold and maximum change settings. These allow you to fine tune when the optical trackers should stop tracking. For example, if I place a tracker here, you'll notice that the handle of these stairs obscures the tracker, yet it still attempts to keep tracking. With these new settings, I can adjust the maximum change allowed between two frames before the tracker gives up. Additionally, I can tweak the optical threshold. Lower threshold value makes it more forgiving, allowing it to stick to footage even when there's uncertainty, as we saw in the stairs example. You can see here that the tracker stops due to its uncertainty, which is exactly what we want in this case. Now onto the next feature, this new update includes a brand new checkerboard undistortion feature. Just load your checkerboard footage in, make sure that your footage has a clear checker pattern with a white border around it, and that the chest pattern extends nearly all the way out to the edges of the screen. Then simply apply this footage as the current active footage and load it in, just like I do here. Next, scroll down to the third panel, which includes the chest pattern calibration area. Here, you can change the row and column values to match your grid. You can also adjust your sensor width to calculate the focal length of the camera. Then just click the Flax Chest Pattern Calibrator, and it will calculate the focal length, principal points, and all the radial distortion coefficients. Then simply apply all the settings by pressing this button. Now, if you open your camera settings and enable the undistortion view and calibration grid, you can see that the images are undistorted. Note that if you use more images, the chest pattern calibrator has more information to work with, which leads to more accurate calibration values. And now you can use these settings for this camera. If you do not want to use a chest pattern to calibrate your camera, you can just track your footage as usual with flax flow. So you always have two ways to calibrate your camera. Either use a chest pattern or let it estimate the values when you solve. But that brings us to the next new feature, which is the new constraints feature. When you solve your footage, you can now choose which parameters you want to estimate and which ones you want to keep fixed. For example, if you know the focal length of your camera, you can lock that parameter. This will make the FlaxFlow solver use the current focal length and only estimate the other two. You can also use the newly calibrated values from the chest pattern by clicking this button, which locks all values and prevents the Flax solver from estimating any values, allowing it to focus solely on solving your camera. Okay, now let's move on to the next new feature, the ST Texture Generator and ST Map Exporter node. It allows you to export the current distortion values as an ST map and use it in other programs. For example, here I have a solved scene. I start by using the ST Texture Generator, which creates a texture with the specified size. Then, as you can see, I now have that texture ready to use in Blender. The next thing I do is go into the Composite tab and add an image node with the newly created ST Texture. Then I add the new ST Map Exporter node, which will distort the ST Map based on the distortion and undistortion the add-on has calculated. Go inside the ST Map node by clicking Tab and select your solved footage. You can decide if you want to export the undistortion or distortion distortion map by connecting the one you want to the composite and viewer node. If you notice that your ST map extends outside your footage, you can solve this by increasing the resolution percentage in the render tab. If you would like the ST map to be higher resolution than it currently is, just increase the overscan percentage on the node. After you are done, you can simply hit F12 to render your image and export it in the format you like, just like a normal render. The new update includes several other smaller features, such as upgrades to the filterer, which is now able to more accurately filter out bad trackers and lead you much faster to a better result. Another new feature is the add-on's capability to handle many new image formats. Previously, some people had problems when trying to track formats other than PNG sequences and videos, but now it can support all of these new image sequence formats and, of course, many, many video formats. An additional small feature is that the add-on now converts your manual one-click geometry points into points instead of empties. Many bugs have been fixed, so if you, for example, experience this error, it is now resolved thanks to the added formats and a better image loading system. Just make sure that you have set the current footage as active using the first button. Another commonly occurring bug that has been fixed is that you can now access the motion tracking area from the splash screen without needing to worry that some of the UI buttons will disappear. Some of you have also contacted me saying that you want longer form explanations, so I have created another video that covers three different difficulty tiers of footage. I will explain step by step how I would have tracked them using FlaxFlow. Lastly, the policy violation notice you get when you download the add-on is meant to be there. It just indicates that the add-on is using third-party modules, such as the Computer Vision Library for Python and the NumPy Library for matrix operations and more efficient calculations. FlaxFlow is available on Blender Market and Gumroad, so make sure to check it out.